Hi, good night everyone. This is U.S. Immigration Attorney Sharifa Tharp. I am here live to take your U.S. Immigration related questions. So go ahead and put your questions in the comments and I will go ahead and answer your questions. It's good to be back tonight and I am ready again to take your questions. So go ahead and put your questions in the comments right now. Tonight I'm going to be talking about um, ways that you can fix your status in the United States. Um, so any K-1 visa tips. So the K-1 visa is the fiancé visa. And in order to qualify for that, you have to be a U.S. citizen who is sponsoring their fiancé. And um, if you, you there, there are requirements that you have to meet. So you have to show that you've met your fiance in at least the um, recent two years before applying in person or that you meet an exception. So, for example, if you are in your uh, if your fiance is in a country where you can't visit because you'll be persecuted or uh, there is there are some compelling circumstances or exceptional circumstances like if there is a conflict in the country that could possibly um be an issue um if you are if you are um you know if there's some sort of extreme hardship and also if there is a tradition so for example some families uh the tradition is that they uh they have an arranged marriage and that they don't meet that person until it's time to get married or and so in cases like that where it's a fa it's either a family tradition or it's a cultural tradition that could possibly be a way to get around the in-person uh, requirement uh, so the tips you do have to show that you intend to marry your fiance when they get to the u.s so it's not a visa that allows your partner to come to the u.s and then have a good time and go back you have to show that you are indeed engaged and that this is a real engagement and so you have to show evidence of that. Show, um, you know, the air, the reservation, travel reservations from seeing each other. Um, affidavits from friends and family talking about the engagement and your relationship. Um, that anything they know about your relationship, um, or any other evidence, exchange gifts, uh, maybe even shared property. If the two of you share property in uh, your fiance's home country or even in the U.S. So these uh, are ways to, sh to show that you have a real engagement uh, to convince the officer that you your fiancé qualifies for the fiancé visa. Any AOS interview tips? Prepare, 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 PAPSID D. Make sure that you bring your required documents. Sid Stewart, yes, I can. So if you have an immigration issue, I can definitely help and I can help with the 221G as well. So um, prepare for that. Uh, make sure you prepare um, because that is the number one reason why there's a delay or even a denial. Make sure you have all your evidence together Make sure you take updated evidence. If this is an if this is an adjustment of status interview based on a family relationship, make sure you have all the documents ready to show that relationship. So, for example, in a marriage base, that's the one that requires a lot of uh, information to convince the officer that you have a bona fide relationship, and so you want to show. Um, you know, updated, any updated evidence that you didn't get to carry before. So any joint property, joint bank accounts that you're active on. So it, it doesn't necessarily look very convincing when you have a joint bank account and it just sits there with zero dollars or very little money in there. The officer can definitely tell that that's just a setup. So you must open a bank account together and really and truly uh, put your funds together, but keep in mind joint accounts are not absolutely required. There are other ways to show, for example, if you have a child together, I mean, what can refute that you have a bona fide child and a bona fide relationship than actually having a child together? Um, if you uh, share benefits, so if you have um, uh, if you have shared insurance, if you have share a car, you know, if both of your names are is on your car. 
if you are on the joint lease together these also are good evidence of a relationship also having friends and family on both sides on not just on one side but on both sides talk about your relationship could also uh, be a good indication of the bona fide marriage so just prepare make sure you talk to your relative make sure that um they are uh, the both of you are on the same page that you know your facts you're consistent um, so talk to them make sure you know the basic facts about your relationship when did you meet how did you meet what did you do uh, uh, to celebrate your last anniversary your in-laws names um, family relationships work uh, what's going on with work what do you do at work what the what the color of your curtains are in the room your routines in the morning these are very important your birthdays basic facts like that. Um, so how IR2 visa gets um, citizenship? So with the IR2, I believe that is the immediate relative. And so uh, there, with immediate relatives of US citizens, that's going to be the spouse of a US citizen, the parent of a US citizen who is 21 and up, or the son or daughter under 21 and unmarried. The parent of a U.S. citizen who is under um, the parent of a U.S. citizen who is 21 and up, they're looking at five years before they can get U.S. citizenship. The spouse of a U.S. citizen three years. The child of a U.S. citizen five years. Um, five years on unless they become a permanent. So when they do become a permanent resident, if they're under 18, they can derive citizenship from their parent. I just married last with my uh, just married last with my man last month. What's the best time to file for him? He's overseas, so usually there is no limit on when you can get when you can file your papers. You can file right away. However, it's always best to get legal advice because the information here is in general. I don't know your facts, and so that's where you must make sure. It's very it's uh, recommended. That before you start the process you schedule a consultation and talk about particular issues that may be happening in your case to determine whether it's the best time for you but generally there is no time limit um, and 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 it's whether I would rec personally recommend a time limit is going to depend on your particular circumstances I was denied a visitor visa twice what can I do to improve my chances on the next time the number one thing you have to do is show that you have strong ties to your home country. So if you're going to school, if you're in a program, if you uh, have a long standing job, if you have strong family ties, make sure that you really bring this out in your application. Would it affect the application if he lives in a red zone? So the, if a red zone means, um, if the red zone means that it is a high conflict area or an, an area where where the US government is on high alert, uh, it could possibly, um, you know, it really depends on your fiance's background, what's currently going on in the country, how is the embassy uh, dealing with uh, those types of visas, whether they're even issuing visas. So um, Krista, Crystal, that's where you should definitely get a consultation to determine how this particular fact is going to affect you. I had an interview, um, the CO asked for proof of relationships. Will the CO ask us questions again? So um, Babe 1900 is very important to provide that evidence. Um, and so if you do provide that evidence, yes, they could definitely come back with more ev uh, questions if they have um if they're not satisfied with the evidence that's in front of them if they've called you back for a second interview then definitely um you have to make sure that you're very much prepared if you are having issues you have concerns schedule a consultation and definitely um get in and get on my calendar so i can advise any tips on consular processing uh, so just, you know, with consular processing, the number one um, cause of delays outside of, you know, more serious issues, of course, is the ability to meet the expectations or requirements at the National Visa Center. They're very strict with, you know, the, the kinds of documents they receive. If there is anything that's wrong with it, they will go back and forth with you. So for example, with the affidavit of support, if it is not completed correctly and completely, 
they will send it right back reject it and it would it can take three months each time that you have to resubmit it for them to tell you just to tell you whether they have finally accepted it so um be, when you're going through consular processing make sure that you have at every level that you are well prepared to meet the requirements at each stage so when you file the application make sure it's a complete application a petition when it gets to the national visa center make sure that you're prepared in advance to submit the affidavit of support submit all the required documents as they want it um, and then as for the interview at the embassy you have to make sure that you uh, are prepared for that interview bring all the required documents because if you don't it can very well lead to a, a denial or delay at the embassy samira love thanks for the follow i appreciate it someone turn back and visa cancel for proof of illegally working in the u.s get back visa now um it it depends it depends because along with that it could be so there so here's what's uh what the issue is when you get turned back at the border um, for an immigration violation is called expedited removal. That's an automatic five-year bar. That means no visa, no green card, no entry into the U.S. for five years. After that, it's, it's not that you're inadmissible unless they also there are also additional immigration violations. So, for example, if you were coming through the, the airport and the officer said, have you been working in the U.S.? and you said no absolutely not i have not and the officer has clear proof in front of them that you have been working in the u.s that could be misrepresentation um, or fraud and in that case uh, that is a lifetime bar and you would have to apply for a waiver to be able to come back to the u.s temporarily or to be able to get a green card and so that's where it, it can get more complicated now as if that did not apply, you're not barred permanently. And um, you, if you want to come back to the US before the five years, then you're gonna have to apply for a waiver and apply for permission to reapply for re-entry. That's gonna be very important if you're applying within that five year period that you're barred. Um, if that five year period passes, um, given the fact that you do have this immigration violation, I can tell you that you would be facing that obstacle uh, just because now you have this immigration violation on your record they're going to be hesitant to give you another visa and you really have to prove that you qualify um, our clients prep for questions that will be asked in consular processing so yes i i prep my clients um so i get them ready i prepare their packets for them to go in um give them the packet to carry the specific documents that they'll need at the, the interview. Um, however, on my, uh, if you're doing this on your own, which I don't recommend, you should definitely um, make sure that you prepare as much as possible. Um, do you see each other sooner? Uh, let's see. I'm a green card holder's fiance, but the tourist visa dates in Jamaica are in 2023. Yes, unfortunately. Um, is there anything we can do? So no, unfortunately not. No, green card holders can't apply for their fiance to get a visa. So unless your green card holder fiance turns into a US citizen, um, it would not be a path for you to be able to come to the US and see each other and, you know, be get married here. Um, however, uh, and so it, it what, in this case, it would really have to be your fiance that travels to see you. Um, you could always, in this case, as you said, it's delayed, you know, interview dates are going way into 2023. And so that can be frustrating. Uh, however, at this point, with the facts that I've seen you give me, um, there, there are limited circumstances. But what you can do is schedule a consultation. Let's see if you uh, if you uh, really would like to pursue some uh, sort of way and there, there are some sort of extraordinary circumstances that you haven't talked about, then maybe we could um, uh, discuss. Another thing, though, is that your, your fiancé could come to the U.S. and you could get married in Jamaica and still move forward with the green card process. So not being able to see each other in the u.s is not going to prevent you from 
still doing what you want to do go from being fiance a, a couple an engaged couple to a married couple you can still do that you'd have to do it in jamaica and then um file for permanent residence 10 year green card possible if divorced after after one year after getting the conditional green card time pass person yes absolutely it is possible now when you are filing for these types of waivers it, this happens marriages break apart after a year um it's unfortunate but it is a very uh, a very realistic thing that happens and so in this case there is a waiver available based on divorce and what you should you need to do is very important is when you're submitting a waiver you have to show the waiver and then also show that you just like you would if you were applying with your spouse you still have to show that you had a bona fide marriage it's just that it fell apart and so this is one of the things i do so if you would really like to make sure you understand this process that you have a professional guidance through the process schedule a consultation let's talk about what your particular issues are and get started on a waiver for you amanda thanks for the follow i appreciate that yes they said to reschedule uh, back when i carry in evidence will they do the interview new again so it depends so sometimes they could tell you to drop off the evidence or sometimes they could actually schedule another interview so uh if they have made clear that they're going to schedule an interview then then it's very likely that you have now it may be what's called a stokes interview and that means that they are really um digging into your relationship to make sure that it is a bona fide um marriage so be very careful if you are concerned about anything babe 1900 schedule a consultation and let's talk more because all the information here i'm giving you is not legal at personal legal advice it's general information and so to make sure that you're protected you know your options you know what you're getting into and to make sure that you are represented you should schedule a consultation satish prasad thanks for the follow and i'm doing well uh, how are you doing uh what kind of forms to submit if you want to file papers for your spouse so Rod, uh, Rodi, i don't get into forms here just because i don't know your circumstances i'm not your attorney i haven't evaluated uh any any of your backgrounds and so i want to be fair here i want to be fair with you so i don't go into forms because i don't want anybody on my account to go get the wrong forms complete those forms and end up in a bad situation so what i recommend is while i don't review forms done on your own what i will do is i definitely explain the details based on your particular circumstances in a consultation so you can definitely call schedule that consultation my number is plastered all over my videos all over my website you can go to the link in my bio it'll take you to the website the phone lines are 24 7. so there's if if the scheduling coordinators are not available there are always after hours receptionists who will still um, take your call take good care of you and um and 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 get you pass your information onto the scheduling coordinators who will call you on the next day found a check in the phone and got five-year bar would a u.s citizen spouse filing uh, make it easier so um k x k r for you in this case a, a, a waiver would have to be required if you're still within that five-year bar and whether there are other issues going on it's going to depend on the full facts of your case of your situation so it is possible um, for a spouse to file for you a u.s citizen spouse and um it no it's usually going to be uh based on um so this is working without a permit and expedited removal but are there other issues going on so is there a misrepresentation is there fraud that was attached to this as well um, so you want to do want to make sure that you get a full evaluation of your case if you're within the five years in the least you will still need what's called a permission to reapply for re-entry and having a u.s citizen spouse could create more of a justification as to why you need 
to um, return, re-enter the United States. However, if it's on a non-immigrant basis, you're also going to need a waiver, a non-immigrant waiver. That means you want to just come temporarily. If you want to come permanently, then that in the lease is going to be the permission to reapply for re-entry. Shulz18 followed. Uh, thanks for the follow. I, If I have a violation, would I still qualify for a petitioned uh, work permit? It depends on, on what violation you're talking about and it depends on where you are. If you're in the United States already um, and you have a violation, I highly recommend that you talk to schedule a consultation with me. Let's evaluate because how we're gonna, how I would approach a situation as an attorney is really gonna depend on what happened in your case. Um, however, it could still be possible if you're here in the U.S. to apply for a work permit through adjustment of status. But it depends on what the violation is, who your relative is. Uh, what your what is your status? What is the violation? Uh, we are getting married this year. Is there no way I can be with him in the U.S. during uh, the waiting? So usually, a U.S. spouse of a U.S. citizen can, if they are already in the United States, even if they are out of status, they ended up overstaying. Um, can go can still you know have completed the process successfully through adjustment of status and that's staying in the U.S. and applying for the green card. However, if you're already outside of the United States and you don't have a visa, uh, it would be, your options are, are limited. Um, so Babe 1900, so it's an F4. Okay, so F4, so it sounds like there is, um, a, if F4, if it's an F4, then it's based on a sibling relationship. Uh, and so if you would like legal advice, definitely schedule a consultation. If this is more about um, proving the relationship between you and your uh, sibling, then uh, we, we would have to talk more about what's going on in your case. Uh, Rodi26, you're welcome and I'm looking forward to hearing from you. My visiting visa, um, I have not traveled for about 12 years now. Can I still renew my visa? Absolutely. Um, you are totally uh, fine, okay with renewing your visa. Whether they will provide you a new visa is going to depend on whether you still go ahead and bring your evidence to show that you continue to have strong ties to your home country because that is what's going to determine whether you will successfully renew your visa. Um, I am going for my visitor's visa soon. Any advice? Show, Natasha, show strong ties to your home country, your job, your properties, your strong family ties. Make sure that you also put this in the application. Hi there, teacher Steve37. I hope all is well. Um, not in the US and it's, it was working without a permit. So if you're not in the US, you would not be able to apply for a work permit. Again, you'll have to go through consular processing. The good news is at the point that you're at the embassy, you're attending the interview at the embassy, um, you're going to know whether you get, you are eligible for an immigrant visa and you can come back to the US. Now, not working without, working without a permit, if you, if this was, you, you were at the border and they turned you back, then that's going to be expedited removal. So that's gonna be considered expedited removal and that does come with consequences. So you do have a five-year bar um, at least. If there are other charges such as uh, misrepresentation or fraud, that may that's going to definitely create a more complex issue. And Spinal 876, I cannot stress enough how important it is for you to get legal advice so that you do everything correctly, you understand what you're getting into, you're, you, you know that someone has your back, you, um, you know how to approach your situation. That's very important that you get a full evaluation. Hello, my son's green card was revoked because he was taking care of his son in Canada. What's the next move for him to have his status return? So usually there is what's called an SB1 visa for returning, and it's an immigrant visa for returning, so residents, uh, returning residents immigrant visa, 
and if your son can show that he didn't intend to stay outside of the United States, that he continues to have strong ties to the United States, so he, he maintains his property, he pay, still pays his taxes, something just happened. So for example, if he went to visit his son in Canada and something extraordinary happened with his son, some exceptional circumstances or compelling circumstances arose with his son, um, then uh, he, even though he didn't intend to stay, he maybe had to stay for a period of time with his son in Canada, then that could possibly qualify him to come back and then reinstate his uh, permanent residence when he gets back to the US. So that is uh, the solution. Uh, Donovan, that's where he should definitely schedule a consultation to see if he qualifies because this is all going to depend on the facts here. It's going to depend on how long he was outside of the US whether the facts support the fact that what of what his intentions were did he in, is it showing that he intended to live in Canada or is it showing that well something just came up and he had to stay for a temporary while that ended up going over a year do they interview spouses uh, separately al uh, al qaeda that is yeah definitely that happens so the reason they separate the spouses is to see if they're very consistent. And that's why I stress the importance of preparation, because if you don't prepare for that, if you are, um, if you, the two spouses are not prepared and they give two different answers, I have seen denials just on that. It could be one question, one question where it's inconsistent. They both and the, the spouses answer differently and that can throw everything off the rails. So very important that you are prepared for that. And usually, um, even though sometimes it can be nerve wracking, sometimes things um, come out of your memory because it's such a nerve wracking experience. That's where sitting down, talking over, um, you know, going over your memories, going over how did you meet? Um, what, what did you celebrate uh, the last time you you celebrated? How did you celebrate when you celebrated your anniversary? What's your favorite holidays? Basic facts about each other, at least that can be helpful. Um, is it normal to get your interview date before work permit and social security? Uh, so that is a, definitely a possibility. Um, when you do go for the interview, you want to make sure you're prepared and that you, um, you're prepared for that interview. Bring all your documents, bring updated evidence if you have it. Uh, make sure if you're going in with a partner <clears throat> that you're prepared to answer the questions consistently and accurately. How long um, does it take for USCIS to send you a letter? It depends on what letter uh, you're referring to. If someone cancel your husband filing before they approve it um, to do USCIS, send you a cancellation letter. So yes, um, they, so they will send you a letter saying that it has been withdrawn. Um, Spinal876, you are welcome. Uh, good evening um, there, cancer, Cancerian Motivation. And you are welcome. Can I sponsor a sister from my father's side? Uh, yes, so half siblings can qualify. You just have to prove that you do have that sibling relationship. Do you help with immigration in Canada? No, I'm not a Canadian immigration attorney. You'll, you'll have to um, find an immigration, a Canadian immigration attorney. What about first time persons who want to work in the US? Because I would like to uh, be a loadmaster. So you will have to usually find an employer who is willing to sponsor you either temporarily or even permanently. At Donovan, Definitely, I am looking forward to hearing from your son. Uh, it is an, a particular issue that I can help should he qualify. Uh, what if you want to work in the USA with visa only? So you are not allowed to work with a B2 visa. So if you do work, you're actually risking losing your um, visa. As, as two individuals have already said before, they got their visas revoked, they were turned around at the airport, and there are ways that they can find this out. Remember that this is a part of the records that they pull. So if you presented um, employee, employment information, you filled out a, 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 w, a W-4 form, you filed taxes, 
um, then these are traceable um, this is definitely traceable sometimes if you go through the airport they will um, look through your phone and they can find your records your work records show that you get you're getting back in touch with your employer so um, it's very important that you understand that if you are going to work that you are at risk for losing your visa and there's no way you're not supposed to be here um, on a B2 visa and be working. Uh, can uh, the provision 212A be overcome and what's the best way? Seems ridiculous, one violation. So um, absolutely, it depends though on what the particular issue is. Um, there are waivers, sometimes there aren't. So uh, that's where you definitely should get in touch with me. Um, so KSSS 1010, definitely just call, schedule a consult. Um, let's see, I applied my husband's adjustment of status. I'm an LPR and my husband is F1 um, international student. Uh, so if you are having an issue, KSS 1010, schedule a consultation, let's talk more. Now you can go to the link in my bio. When you go to the link in my bio, you're going to see three different ways. Well, right now, two different ways to get in touch. So uh, you can fill out a contact form. It's going to get straight to the scheduling coordinator who's going to contact you on the next day. Um, then there is the phone number. That is a 24-7 phone number. You can call. Let them know that you want to schedule a consultation. They will pass it on to the scheduling coordinator. Uh, Monday to Friday, a scheduling coordinator is available to schedule you that same day, 9.30 a.m. to 11 p.m. Um, on Saturdays and Sundays, it is uh, noon to 5 p.m. And even this Monday, it is a holiday in the U.S. It's Labor Day. There are scheduling coordinators who will still be available to take your calls because I know um, you are off that day and you may have some time to contact us and schedule that consult. I'm a citizen from Caribbean. How can I migrate uh, to the United States? So there are many different ways through work, through family, through even humanitarian means. And if your, your country qualifies for the diversity visa, that's like the lottery for the green card. You can find information about that at, and see if your country qualifies at the USCIS, I mean the Department of State. Uh, can non-relatives sponsor you to come to the US? An employer can. However, if the person is not an employer, then it's no, they can. Um, what's the cost of a consultation? It's $150 for up to an hour. Now, I always follow that with, it is worth your time and money because you will understand, you will walk out of that consultation understanding what you qualify for, how to approach your situation, whether there are even better options. You avoid mistakes that can turn into ex more expensive mistakes, by the way. And you can walk out with me as your attorney to help you through the process and, so, and to get your results. So um, very important that you understand that you will be walking out with value and you'll be avoiding a more expensive situation personally or even uh, financially. Now, on, I am going to head over to Instagram because I do have a pre-scheduled live on Instagram. So we don't have to end the conversation here. You can hop on over to Instagram, follow me, and then join me in one minute. Um, if you go to the link in my bio, you will see the, um, you'll see the, uh, the button to go to Instagram. My handle on Instagram is the same as here, the immigration attorney. You can go there, join me and continue to ask your questions there. Thanks so much for all your questions. I appreciate it. And it really helps me to give you information that uh, you care about. So thanks um, for that. And thanks for providing your questions that help others to get valuable information. If you need to schedule a consultation, go to the link in my bio, go to the website and you'll see all the different ways you can get in touch with me to, uh, and a scheduling coordinator can get you on my schedule. So have a good night if I don't see you on Instagram in a minute. And remember, I'm here every night at 9 p.m. Eastern time to take your calls. So this does not have to be the end of it. We can talk on Instagram right now, 
or you can come back on at 9 p.m. tomorrow to continue the conversation. Have a good night, everyone. Bye.